Hey y'all, welcome back to the Jackalope Designs art channel, home to all things art. So today we're gonna talk about the five different ways to transfer your reference image to the paper that you want to do the art on. So I'm gonna be working from the easiest to the hardest. You can kind of look through the methods and see which one you wanna try. Also, in the description box below, I'll link the video for how I prepped all of my images to get them ready for transfer. And I'll also link in the description box the supplies that I used and a timestamp for each of the methods. So if you know which one you wanna try and you don't necessarily want to sit and watch the whole video, you don't have to. I'll go ahead and put that in the description box. So if you wanna skip ahead to a particular method, you can do that. Cue the drum roll. The five different methods are tracing, transfer paper, it's actually tracing paper, but I call it transfer paper. <laughs> the grid method, reference point method, and last but not least, freehand. So for all of these methods, regardless of which one you choose, they are just a guide. So when you go to do them, we're gonna get outlines, major features like eyes, direction of hair or feathers, um, highlights, shadows, things like that. But don't get caught up in the details. You know, you don't wanna spend so much time and so much effort on getting all these little details and then get into it and wanna maybe put a little personal flair into things. Are you ready? Let's jump right in. All right guys, today's first method is gonna be tracing. You're gonna wanna go ahead and tape your paper over the tablet. You just wanna make sure that there's no sliding that could lead to messing up your line work and things like that. Make sure that you turn off the lights. That's gonna make the background really illuminate up through the paper and make it easier for you to see all the details. You also want to try and avoid touching the screen so you don't accidentally move or resize your image while you're working. This will also kind of help you make sure that you hold your pencil further back, which will prevent you from putting too much pressure. We don't want to indent lines into our paper because this is just a guideline. You don't want any embossed areas that are deeper than the rest of the paper. Like I said before guys, you do want to go ahead and get outlines and details like shadows and highlights, but don't get crazy with it. You don't want to try to outline every single individual feather. And there you guys have it, as easy as pie or tracing. <laughs> Now, if you don't have a tablet, there are a couple traditional ways to do this. The first is with graphite paper, and you're gonna wanna place this shiny side towards the paper that you're wanting to get your image onto. And then you're gonna place your image on top of the matte side of that paper. When I'm tracing like this, I like to use a red colored pencil because it stands out more and you can see better where you've been. Also, when you're doing this, make sure you use an extremely light hand because there's a lot of graphite, especially on new pieces, that will transfer onto your paper and you want it to be very light. And there you guys have it. Just like magic. Or tracing. One more way to trace if all you literally have is your picture is to hold it up to a window and put your paper over the top of it. Try to limit as much light from behind you as possible, so turn off any lights and things like that. That's gonna maximize the amount of light that comes through your picture and the amount of things that you can see. I did wanna to touch on the fact that there is a lot of controversy in the art community about tracing in general. But if you're just starting out, you don't wanna get frustrated with your initial sketch and not even get to try an art medium because you can't get things to look right. A really nice initial sketch will set the tone for your whole project. And in my opinion, tracing can help you get practice with a medium with much less pressure. 
Also, I believe it helps you to learn shapes and proper proportions so you can work toward being a better sketcher in general. Tracing is also really helpful if you're pressed for time. Yes, I could spend a whole lot of time freehanding and get a product fairly close or close enough to the reference image, but I don't always have or want to spend my time on that part of a project. Here's the finished product and that's going to be it for tracing. So when using transfer paper, or tracing paper rather, it's very thin so it makes it a lot easier to get all the details that you're trying to get because you can see them very clearly. So for this method, similarly to tracing, we're going to go ahead and tape our paper over the top of the tablet and just follow all the lines that you can see, outlines, general details, but don't get carried away. For this method, however, you can apply quite a bit of pressure. We're going to want a lot of graphite on that transfer paper for when we flip it over and push it onto the actual paper that we're doing our project on. Once you're done, it should look something like this. We'll go ahead and flip our picture over onto the paper that we want our finished product on and we'll tape it down to prevent sliding. And then we're going to use a red colored pencil to follow along all the lines that we previously made and push that graphite onto the paper. Alternatively, you could use graphite paper to do this process. I did prep my image flipped so that it would come out facing the right direction. So if you wanted to use graphite paper instead, just take that into consideration and you wouldn't flip your image when you were getting it prepared. Alright guys, that's it for the tracing paper method. As you can see, my lines are a little bit blurry, but if you wanted to do graphite paper, they would be sharper. To make your grid, first decide what size you would like your grid squares to be. There should be the same number of grid squares on your paper as there is on your reference image. I mark one inch intervals at two different locations, both horizontally and vertically. Then I'm using my ruler to line up the dots I made and make a straight line. I am doing one inch squares since I have an 11 by 8.5 sheet of paper and there are 11 squares vertically and 8.5 squares horizontally from my reference image. So this will fit perfectly on the paper. Now we can start filling in grid squares with information. Pick a square and draw what you see using the edges of that square as a guide. Try to eyeball if you think that a particular line is maybe halfway up a square or a quarter of the way up the square. And this will help you decide placement, which will help with proportions and also making sure that all your lines line up in the end. Sometimes marking where you think a line is going to land will help you make a long, straight, flowing line that doesn't necessarily stop and start at every single square and has a better flow to it. I'm not going to lie, this is not my favorite method of transfer. While it really does have some very practical applications, such as if you're trying to massively enlarge an image, it still is very time consuming. It does, however, make it a lot easier as a beginner because you get to practice drawing on a much more scaled down version since you're only paying attention to one square at a time you can really focus on what it, details are important you don't necessarily have to get so overwhelmed by all this information in the entire picture if you're just starting out just do your best to focus on one square at a time and it'll all come together in the end
So this is my finished preliminary sketch on the printer paper with the grid still on it. I then start to erase the grid lines and darken my sketch. If you're using the graphite paper option, you do not need to do this step. Once you've done that, you can flip your paper over onto your finished page and tape it down. And then you're going to want to use the flat side of your pencil and use a fair amount of pressure to just scribble everywhere that you know lines are. This is going to press that graphite onto the other sheet of paper. I'm then just quickly going through and slightly darkening some of the finer details to make sure I can see them, but don't press too hard because we don't want any super harsh outlines. Alternatively, to save time, you can use graphite paper instead for this step. This is easier because you don't have to erase any grid lines or darken any areas, um, but do keep in mind that when you are preparing your image, if you're going to do graphite paper, you do not have to flip the image. I flipped the image because I had planned on flipping my paper over to get it down on my final product page. However, you do not have to do that if you're going to use graphite paper because it's already going to be in the correct orientation. Using graphite paper does result in much cleaner lines with your finished product. Here are the finished sketches. The one on the left is where I flipped my page over, and the one on the right is using graphite paper as a transfer method. On to the reference point method. This method is essentially freehanding with a little extra guidance. You can use your pencil or a ruler as a guide tool to kind of judge how far away you think particular points are from each other. So I did realize when I was almost done that because of the angle I was looking at my tablet, my reference points were at an odd perspective, so my cat came out a little squished. I would recommend having your reference image straight in front of you so you have a, a straight shot view of what you're looking at and you don't end up having a side view of your picture. Once you get all your points down, it's basically connect the dots. I am using a colored pencil to do all my line work for this and that's because this is going to be a color pencil piece and the color pencil is going to be a lot easier to go over than graphite pencil is and the color I'm using is one of the lightest values that will be in the piece so that it's going to be really easy to cover up as I go. Once you're done, gently erase reference points and repair the line work as needed. And you're done! Ah, the dreaded freehand method. This method can be daunting and scary. It can also be very rewarding when you see what you've created. To start this method, just get anything on your paper. Pick one detail and start drawing. This detail is going to be what you judge all of the rest of the proportions for the entire sketch on. I'm starting with the large upper leaf and I'm really trying to fill my canvas with it because it's more visually appealing to have a canvas that is filled as much as possible. If you'd like to try freehand but you're not quite ready for an entire picture, just start by trying to draw some circles and lines and just practice doing those over and over and over again and you will see yourself progress. I'm not the best example as you can see, but try to make confident lines. So not the quick back and forth strokes, but one long straight line. Make sure you also look at your reference image as frequently as possible. Try to mimic the shapes and lines and curves that you see. That's it guys. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video and 
Hope you got to try at least one or maybe more of the methods shown. As always, please like and subscribe. And if you have any comments that you'd like to share about tutorials that you would like to see in the future, please let me know. I'm gonna wrap today's video up with a bad mom joke. Are you ready? Two peanuts walking down the street. One was assaulted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see y'all next time. Later Gators.